In this video tutorial, we're going to show how to simulate a varying thickness for a slab in Adapt Builder. And this has to be done using slab segments to simulate this type of an approach. To start, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the example we're going to be working on. And we're going to just assume that this is 40 feet uh, square. So both dimensions here in the X and Y are 40 feet. We have a varying thickness starting here, 8 inches working out to 16 inches and we're going to say that the um, the varying thickness the the bottom of the slab let's say remains flush and so in the program we cannot model currently a smooth continuous transition or a taper so we take a section through here we can't model something that looks like this uh, where this is eight inches thick and this is 16 inches thick so uh, what we're going to do is simulate that by just adding some sections here that have a few steps. And we're going to say we, we're going to have a section here that's 8 inches thick, and then we'll jump up to, let's say, 10, 12, and then we're going to have a fifth layer here, and we'll say 14th, and then we'll have a 16th. So there's going to be uh, five segments, and we're really just going to break these segments like so. Those are the five segments, and we're going to do something like that and model this in Adapt Builder. So let's go ahead and open Builder and get started. We'll use Builder 20 uh, to do this. We want to have Floor Pro open, and this could be in RC or PT mode. Uh, under the modes, you can see here we have uh, RC selected, and either of these could be selected. So let's just go ahead and select OK. And the next thing we're going to do is just input our panel. So we're going to assume, maybe we'll do this in two panels, and we'll just copy over so let's go ahead and first start by going to the home snap tools I just selected on snap to grid that's also shown down here and we'll say this is going to be um, let's say four feet sections and I'll go over here to model and we're first actually let's go to home and let's just draw some construction lines so uh, these construction lines um, we're going to lay out will be basically outlining the slab here's one panel let's say and then we have uh, a low point here okay and I'm actually gonna go ahead and just create some intersecting lines here that'll be easy to snap to. Um, you could also create this in a DWG or DXF file, import that and just use that as your, your reference. So I really don't need to have, if I can snap to these grids, I don't need to have this background, but a lot of times we cannot snap to those grids, so I'm just drawing in uh, the line work that's gonna allow me to easily place all of our unique uh, slab regions. So that's, the, that's kind of the geometry that we're going to be working with. I'll turn off this grid uh, in the background. And now I'm just going to go ahead and start modeling slabs. So I'll, I'll worry about the thicknesses and the offsets when I'm done modeling. Uh, make sure when we're modeling the, sl uh, the slabs we have some of these points turned on. I'm here I'm using snap to endpoint. You also might want to use snap to intersection. Okay, there's slab one. And I'm not going to nest any slabs. All of these slabs will be adjoined. Um, this slab I can actually move out like so and I can insert, let's just insert a point there. Okay, that's our eight inch core, I'll call it. And, and then the next slab, I could do this a few different ways. I could wrap this around and on the inside of the core and then create this fill-in piece, okay, or uh, by the way, if I, if I select this to select a slab to, to, to delete it, it's actually selecting this line. So if I press tab, that will toggle through and I can then enter um, or excuse me, delete and delete those slabs. Because I want to have some consistency and symmetry in the way that this looks in terms of how it's built so I can just look at it and tell you know, where my slab regions are, I'm going to just build each slab in each unique quadrant. Um, or section of this 
overall system. So let's go back and I'll just build out this top quadrant first. This is much easier if you have these uh, construction lines to build from. Again, this could be something that you've imported from a CAD file that's just easily traceable. Uh, if you have polygons, if each one of these regions is a polygon, I could just easily transform this to slabs using these transform tools here. So here I'm just creating the slabs by drawing them using the added structural components, but I could actually transform them and make this a bit a bit easier. Uh, but this, this is not too bad. So once that's done, we now have, if I go to the visibility render tool, all of these are flat. So there's nothing here really that stands out. It's just a big flat eight inch slab. The default is eight inches. I'm actually gonna select um, under settings, I'm going to go to layer settings. I'm going to turn off, let me just sort this by uh, name alphabetically. I'm going to turn off the adapt line layer. Once I do that, now I can go through and, and assign properties. You can see these are eight inch uh, slabs. Actually this, let's do the core first. So the core is um, eight inches. And if we go to offsets, there's no offset downward. If we go to a side view, everything here is referenced off of this current plane. So we're going to now, we want to keep everything flush, we're going to have to offset the rest of the slab. So let's go ahead and select the rest of our slabs. If I press control and select this slab, I have four selected as indicated by the handle. Those will say are 10 inches and the offset is positive downward, negative upward. The offset is going to be negative two. Okay, we'll select the next. Uh, set of slabs. This is going to be 12 inches and this will be a negative 4 inch offset. We have 8, 10, 12. This will be 14 and let's say a negative 6 inch offset. Okay, and then the last set. Now I'm going to show this using the old tools in version 19 and prior. In version 20 we have this prop property grid, but if I if I wanted to do this without the grid, I could go to modify the selection. Because I'm modifying more than one slab region, I cannot use item properties. That's for an individual uh, change to a property of a component. Um, just one selected component. So here I'm going to go to slab region. Thickness will be 16 inches and the uh, offset is going to be negative eight inches like so okay and now if we go back to visibility this is kind of what we have we have this sunken kind of step down slab system we could also you could break it into multiple segments if you want this is just broken into, into five if i take a cut through here we have something that looks like that and then we can add post tensioning through you know this this member if we have PT in the slab. Now I could copy this now also. If I, let's say I have columns. So we're going to go, let's say this repeats itself four in the X, four bays in the Y, and we'll just add some columns here. Uh, let me go back to the grid. We'll say these columns are 22 square. Okay, I have a 22 square column. Let's go ahead and place those. And then I'm just going to go back here and select. Uh, let's just select all. I don't want these two columns to be copied because they'll stack and you'll get a duplication error. So once I select all, I can just press Control and select these. And if I use um, Control Shift C, I can copy from a reference point. So we're going to copy, let's say, from here over to there, over to there, something like that. And then in the other direction, I'll just turn off these guys here. Oops, let me grab that one. Uh, Control Shift C again, and we have. Oops, I need to. I should have selected the top row. Let me try that again here. So. OK, 
Okay, Control Shift C, or we could use Modify in plane movement also. That's another way of doing this. I'm just using some shortcuts on the keyboard. So now I have something that looks like, like this. This is fairly complex in terms of the, the slab regions, but the, the in, you know, the, this, as long as you have all the slabs adjacent uh, to one another that are not overlapped, they're abutted on their edge, this should mesh just fine. Um, if I look at this now here, you can see the, the steps in each one of those panels. So I could also take a cut through both directions, let's say something like so. And then also in this direction, like so. Okay, if we wanted to add a couple of, um, let's add a couple of cables here, just some PT cables along these, along these slabs. So let me go over here. Oh, this is an RC. I'll have to reopen this in PT. But before we do that, let me go back over and just mesh this. We'll just use the default meshing size. I'll run it as RC first and we'll add some cables and show a couple things to watch out for in terms of the PT, if, it, if this becomes a PT slab. Okay, so there's the mesh for uh, this system. We can execute. The analysis, I'll just execute for self-weight. We have no load on the system. If I meshed at a smaller size, I have, uh, this is a fairly uniform mesh in terms of the sparsity of the, of the element size, but the you might get more uniformity. And here, this might qualify for some of you would want to mesh a little bit tighter, maybe two feet with a one, uh, one uh, foot node shift or no node shift. But this runs, um, if we look at the deflected shape here, it looks just like a pretty much a normal slab. Um, if it was solid, but it's hard to you know differentiate between the two, that we're likely obviously getting less or more deflection here than we would in a, in a solid slab um, at the area where the, we have the reduced thickness. And then we can go also into our contours shapes here. Okay, so that's how we would model that. Let's go ahead and save this. Okay, we're going to close the program and then I'm going to go ahead and just reopen the program. And I'm going to toggle this back over to PT so that I can uh, model a couple of tendons here. So even though it was built in this mode, we have the availability to to switch the modes. Um, I should have modeled in, or I, I could have modeled in this mode without any PT and just have the functionality available, but we selected uh, RC first. Let's just reopen that, that uh, model. Okay, and now I'm gonna add just some post-tensioning Let's just add a, a cable or two, kind of right along the center uh, bay. And we're going to assume we would have, let's say, banded tendons in the Y direction. So even though um, they're not there in this. So what, what that means is I want to add, let's say, a high point at the band. So everywhere I click away from the ends is a high point. Um, so there's, there's one cable. So we, again, we might have like a banded cable. I'll model these in this direction. There might be a banded cable, for example, along here. Okay, and I'll just copy that over. Just on the other side of this column right there. Okay, so we have our bands, and if we look at those bands, those are in the slab. We'll just leave them as, as they are. They're in the 16 inch slab in the transverse direction. And by the way, we could copy these 
using the same command that I showed earlier, Control uh, Shift C, which allows multiple copies with reference point. So maybe I'll copy them here. Let me turn off that snap to nearest tool. And I'll copy them here. And I'll copy them also. End. Okay. We'll just delete out this and this. Okay, this is going to the thinnest portion, so we want to make sure that we have this inside of the slab. And you can see the high points are all at the 16 inch slab, the low point drapes low where it's flush, so we we're really worried about where it starts to transition down and this starts to step and you can see this is fully within the within the um, within the slab so let's just copy this down let's go to modify copy let's say every four feet we're going to copy this and we'll just do 20 copies And we could, we could check other locations. If I check this location, for example, if I check this location, everything should be within the slab. So if we wanted to continue that, we could copy these down. Once we have our tendons in the model, I could reanalyze the model and um, make sure if you go from RC to PT, you go back and add the PT load combination or load case and inside of the combination. So here I want to add this one. One, I'd probably want to do hyperstatic or secondary on the strength combos. And then we can go back and rerun. So let's rerun this. Okay, and if we go back just to look at the deflection, we, we're not required to go into this uh, viewer. We could always just look at the deflection inside of the result browser inside of this main uh, interface. So I could go over here to analysis under slab deformation. And we should see more deflection over here, um, potentially, <laughs> depending on, you can see like here there's a hotter spot than up here. This is where we have more PT. Um, so this is the result for service total, which includes the post-tensioning in the model. And we could also uh, develop design strips along column lines, middle strips if needed using these tools on, under floor design. We're not going to go through that portion. Um, if you wanted to look at just the stresses analytically for orthogonal directions or for principal directions, which in this case align, then we could always go back to slab stresses and this allows us to see you know, bottom fiber stresses along X uh, and top fiber stresses. So we're looking at max tension is kind of in this zone here. We have we have um, compression here, which should be indicated as negative, as shown here. That's over the supports, and then we have the positive stress mid-panel. So, If you have any questions about this procedure or approach to modeling these tapered slabs, please let us know. You can contact us at adaptsupport at Thank you.